Hey there, it's Chris McDonald. This is the third in my Encore series of the Best of the Holistic Counseling podcast. I'm taking a break right now, so I wanted to focus on my self-care, but still offer you some valuable content that you might have missed. So today's episode was an interview I had with Janice Cohen, and she touches on a topic that impacts so many of us in the holistic counseling field, and that is how to manage the stigma of holistic counseling. Many therapists, counselors are fearful of coming out of the holistic closet and worry about judgment from others in the field. She dives into the importance of standing in your confidence, stepping into your gifts, and building your holistic community. So grab your crystals, a blanket, and get cozy for an episode you don't want to miss. This is Holistic Counseling, the podcast for mental health therapists who want to deepen their knowledge of holistic modalities and build their practice with confidence. I'm your host, Chris McDonald, licensed therapist. I am so glad you're here for the journey. Have you ever worried about being judged by others because you use holistic strategies in your therapy? Are you afraid others won't take you seriously as a professional? Or maybe you've already had some negative experience with judgment from others, as well as criticism based on information out there. If you feel you are in the holistic closet because of the stigma of holistic counseling and therapy, this episode is for you. I'm happy to bring back a former guest, Janice R. Cohen, who helped us discover how we all could be an intuitive therapist on one of my bonus episodes. Janice is going to discuss today causes for the stigma on holistic counseling, her personal journey through it, and how you can take steps today to overcome that fear of judgment and be more authentic in your counseling practice. In 2016, Janice published her first book called The Intuitive Therapist. Janice also has a podcast called The Intuitive Therapist Podcast, which she merges intuition, spirituality, metaphysics, and therapeutic wisdom to teach listeners how they can master their emotional, psychological, spiritual, and financial destiny to ultimately achieve courage, confidence, and certainty in all aspects of their lives. Welcome back to the podcast, Janice. Glad to be back. Yay. Can you <laughs> can you tell my listeners more about yourself and your work? Yeah, I uh I've been a therapist for about 30 years and about 13 years ago, um the trajectory of my practice completely shifted. It kind of blew itself out of the water. I had been a traditional therapist for much of my career, 17 18 years of it. And then uh it felt like overnight um my intuition skyrocketed, my psychic gifts opened up, um, and my gifts of clairvoyance, uh, clear seeing, clear sentience, clear feeling, clear cognizance, clear knowing. Um, I was psychic and I could see things other people uh, couldn't necessarily see images, words, people, places, uh, clients' challenges with laser accuracy, the blocks, uh, and the solutions. Um, and also, uh, my gifts as a medium. So that changed the trajectory of how I worked with my clients. And, uh, I was able to rebrand myself as the intuitive therapist, not just a therapist. Um, yeah. And we talk about the clairs and how you can discover that in the bonus episode. If you haven't listened to that, I highly recommend going back and listening to that as well as, more about how to be an intuitive therapist, which is, I think, so awesome. And it really upgrades your whole counseling sessions with clients. Just so cool. Yeah. We're not going to go into that today. So we're already there. <laughs> right. So we're going to move on to today's topic, which is the stigma around holistic counseling, holistic strategies and therapy. And I asked Janice to come on because I know you are one that has gone through this and you had to hope you did a whole rebranding and understand what this is like. So what do you think are the reasons for stigma around holistic strategies? Well, I think people don't know where to put them. They're not there. It's almost like they're not trustworthy. It's That's almost true. like yeah. people, yeah, people assume that there's, there's no scientific basis for any kind of intervention. Uh, there are interventions, holistic interventions that for a lot of people feel like um, th they just doubt too much. 
you know, if it's not a theory that's already been proven, if it doesn't have scientific data to back it up, if there's not been a book written about it, if they if they come from whoever whoever it is comes from a very uh, kind of old school, uh, concrete based way of thinking about what intervention looks like, then anything beyond the norm is going to be really hard to accept. And I, ha- I have to tell a story about this. I remember years ago when I attended a, a, uh, a conference for my uh, state licensure, I was in a breakout session and uh, we we're going around the room. There were probably about 40 people in the room before the speaker spoke. And she asked everybody to give their name and what they did for a living. And everybody did traditional stuff. They were caseworkers or therapists or, or counselors or, or caregivers or whatever it was. And then it got to me. And I was, I was in the back of the room, just happened to be. And I said, yep, I'm, I've been a therapist and uh, I'm a clairvoyant empath and medium. And when I tell you, literally, I felt the energy change in the room. It went dead silent. I bet. <laughs> and it felt like the energy was, the air was sucked out of the room. Nobody said a word. They just looked wow. at it. And then I just smiled because I was so proud. Like, yes. I, it was not my first encounter. I encounter this a lot. Uh, and I actually enjoy sharing with people what I do to just see how uncomfortable they get. Uh, because... <laughs> It, it's it's That's fun. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun for me to help people uh, hear something new, learn something new, but also encounter somebody who is so solid in it. You know, so solid in who I am, and so it's it was it was very very funny. And then uh, the person next to me just she just started to explain what she did, uh, and then you could feel the energy kind of get back to what was I guess normalcy. Um, the beautiful thing is that I had uh, at, at the break, I had probably about five or 10 people come up to me and say, hey, you know, kind of like they whispered, like, yeah, I, I kind of dabble into the holistic stuff too, but I'm too scared to tell <laughs> the anybody. The secret society, that. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, please. Yeah. So it was wonderful. That's a great um, example. Yeah. It was, it was great to kind of pave the way for some people to come up and, and chat and kind of come out. I think that shows your level of confidence now that how you've grown and, and yeah. you're able, because I don't think a lot of people are at that level that a lot of listeners are. Because I know a lot of the people I have on this podcast that talk about holistic strategies, there's a hesitancy even before we begin recording. <laughs> like, is this okay? Not shocked. Not shocked. <laughs> right. Yeah. Can, am, am I going to be like, what are people going to say? What's going to happen right. when I, this goes out? And then when, you know, when the link gets sent, they're like, Ugh, maybe, I don't know. Should we actually do this? <laughs> you know what? And I, I really, when I laugh, I, I laugh, I'm not mocking people. Exactly. Because I, yeah. I work with clients all the time who I have to help, uh, help them stand in their confidence. Yes. Uh, in that's their it, gifts and it? their abilities. Mm-hmm. You know, because the way I see it, it's like if you're able to help people with the gifts and skill sets that you have, shout that from the rooftops. And you know what? You're, the right people are going to come to you and support you. The right people are going to come to be uh, your clients. Um, you're going to you're going to find your groove and you're going to find your uh, your group. Uh, so I help clients a, a, a lot. Um people who are who are their own entrepreneurs, you know, their own business owners, really get deeply grounded in the confidence of showing up in the truth of who they are. And that's not always an easy journey in the beginning. I think not to minimize that for anyone. Sure. It's really difficult, you know, coming out with this podcast as well has been yeah. challenging. Um <laughs> because uh, yeah. it's it, and, and I'm not gonna lie, it's not for everybody. Not everybody is meant to do holistic counseling or to learn energy healing. And that's okay. Everybody's got their own walk. But, you know, I was, I was uh, messaging Janice about an instance where there was judgment about my podcast in the local therapist community. And um, she was just like to be expected. And it's good. You're letting people think, I think you said letting people think, getting people to think about this and explore other ways of doing counseling. Yeah. Which is a totally different reframe. For me, I'm panicked. I'm like, oh my God, what's happening? (laughs) Right. You know, I I I have several people who are referred to me from traditional psychotherapists 
Um, and they, they hadn't even bothered to look up my information. They just got my number, got my name and called. And so I always ask, um, you know, have you heard of me? Do, do you know what I do? And so I explained to them what I do. And, and they're always like, wow, that is really, that is really <laughs> cool. How does that work? So the beauty of it is that I enjoy explaining how it works to people. It is so fun for me uh, because it's so much a part of my lifestyle, not just my work, but who I am. And what I have found with uh, just clients that I work with who are just for their own sake, developing their gifts, uh, and even entrepreneurs who are looking to to uh, expand and develop their gifts to accentuate uh, their their practice, I I find the hesitancy is based in the fear of what people will think. It is that, that there's judgment there. That oh my gosh, if 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 I say that I'm uh, I'm into acupuncture or crystals or or psychic stuff or read cards, people are going to reject me. People are going to think that I'm a wacko, a weirdo. Too much woo-woo. Yeah, or, or that I'm not credible. That piece to me is what I feel like is the crux of what I help, help my clients with, is, is really aligning with the credibility that exists simply because they have the skill set. And a lot of people don't get that. You know, That's true. Mm-hmm. So many people are gifted. Everybody's intuitive, like I said, especially in the first podcast that we recorded together, everybody is. And in my opinion, everybody's psychic too. A lot of people will deny that. Um, But just as when people learn something new, they question their credibility, they question their ability, they question whether or not they're they're good enough. So it's, it's the same thing when it comes to really owning, stepping into the ownership of your gifts. How do you do that? step into it? Yeah, that I love that question. It's a great question. I feel like one of the most important things to address first is uh, what the fear is if you did. I ask clients a lot, you know, what what's so scary about uh, letting people know that um, I have this one client, actually, I'll give you a story. I love stories. Uh, she's a hairdresser in Georgia, Southern Georgia. And uh, it's very, the area that she lives in is uh, very religious and they don't, I guess they don't have people like her around where she is a, she turns out to be a medical intuitive. She came to me originally, and I'm going to get to how you, how you step into that certainty. She came to me originally knowing that she had some gifts. She didn't kind of know what they were, um, but she knew she wanted to develop them. And that's where most of my clients start. They come to me like, I think I have these gifts and they don't even think about building a business because they already have their careers or they're married and they don't have to work or, you know, whatever. They, they've got other things going on. But it, as it turns out, the stronger she got in, in really learning how to connect with her gifts, how to build that intuitive, psychic, holistic currency within herself. In other words, she proved to herself that these skills and gifts were valid simply by honoring them and following through with them. Um, and so over time, she, she became more confident. And then it turns out that as she meditated, as she grounded, as she uh, took other courses to uh, expand her gifts, she ended up connecting with a guide, G-U-I-D-E, uh, who actually has been her her force of, of working with her to help help people medically uh in, intuitively uh and so it it really developed in such a beautiful uh evolution for her uh, so to me getting comfortable with your gifts is really understanding the fact that it is who you are and you have every right to not want to shout that from the rooftops, to not want to publicize it. However, you are sacrificing who you are. You are risking not being able to uh, influence and model for other people standing in your truth. And so 
judgment without a doubt is a, is a huge piece that I think people fear. What if somebody thinks I'm weird? What if they don't like what I do? What if I lose my business because of it? And so I love to counter that. I love to be devil's advocate. And I love to ask, well, what if you don't? What if, what if the people in your life, you're able to teach them what you do, educate them enough about what you do, that they become your most uh, avid supporters? What if the people who walk away needed to walk away and that made room for people who were really on your team? What if people didn't judge you? What if, if you were standing in your truth, you allowed people to really look at how they were living their lives? See, those are the kinds of questions that I ask. Because Great reframes. Right. So because we, we have these beliefs that we think are real. It's all projection. And it's all because we aren't comfortable with who we are. And if you think back on your life, you know, different aspects of your life that you, you look back, Chris, like 10 years ago, um, would you ever thought that you were would be sitting where you are right now? I mean, Absolutely not. No. Somebody said to you, hey, yeah, you will be a podcaster and talking about all of this stuff. And you, you would have said, yeah, no. Nah. And a yoga teacher. No, that was never on, the, on my goal list. <laughs> all right. So look at your life now. Look at what you have exactly. achieved uh, simply because you kind of really, you, you didn't consider anything else. You didn't consider the, the opposite, the negative. I always like to reframe and I feel like that it's so important to help people anchor into giving themselves permission to, um, to be who they are. Building and managing the practice you want can be challenging. That's why Alma offers administrative tools, time-saving resources, and an easy way to navigate insurance. So whether you're just starting out or have been working independently for years, you can get the support you need to build your private practice. Create a profile in Alma's searchable directory and share what makes you unique, like your specialties and areas of expertise. People who are looking for care can filter by these details so that they're not finding any therapist, they're finding you. Alma will also help you get credentialed with major insurance payers within 45 days and handle all of the paperwork from eligibility checks to claim submissions. That means you can spend less time on the details and more time delivering great care. Plus, they guarantee payment within two weeks of every appointment. You support your clients. Alma supports you. Visit HelloAlma.com to learn more. That's HelloAlma.com. And I think you said, too, when I, I mentioned to you about some of the negative um, criticism I had about my podcast that you mentioned too, that they're not meant for your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> they're not your people. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. And on mine, it's so funny because I look at mine, I think I have a few uh, less than desirable ratings uh, in a oh, one, okay. one negative review. And I'm like, well, cool. You know, because <laughs> I, 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 I know my style is very, very straightforward, but I do it with love. I do it with compassion, but I, over the years, I mean, I've been doing this for almost 30 years. I, I don't mince words. And I believe in that. And there are a lot of people who aren't ready to hear the truth. And when you're not ready to hear the truth, um, then you poo-poo it or you criticize it or you judge it because you're not ready. And I always say to, to my clients, you know what? Enjoy the fact that other people have a problem with what you do. Because all you have to do is just have compassion with the fact that they aren't on a, the path that you are. And that's really okay. Uh, everybody's on a different path at a different time. And it may be that five years later, 10 years later, six months later, they may encounter somebody who is holistic, who changes their lives. And then they'll look back and they'll go, wow, I can't, you know, back in the day, I, I didn't believe so-and-so that, that uh, what she had to offer uh, would work or or made sense. So you never know. And I always say, I always keep saying, I always say, because I do uh, <laughs> have compassion for people who don't get it yet. That's true. Yes. <laughs> I like how you said that. Because yeah. they may in the future, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. You never know. And I wonder too, thinking about standing in your truth and building that foundation of confidence, if some of that can come from, the effectiveness of what you're doing. 
and getting without that message out there. It, sure, sure, sure. Without a doubt. I think when I talk about um, uh, intuitive currency, personal currency, what I'm really talking about is how you value yourself. Um that is the most important thing is how you value yourself. Do you yourself believe in your gifts? Do you yourself believe in your capabilities? Because if you don't, how are you going to possibly expect that other people will? It's impossible. Yeah. That's where you got to start is, do I believe if, if I went to, uh, to get trained as, as you have, as a yoga expert, Expert, you know, you know, teaching expert. Um, it's something I believe in. I invested a lot of time, a lot of weekends, daily practice, and, too. <laughs> right? A lot of classes, a lot of teaching, a lot of, you know, uh, giving free classes and and uh, passing the test, studying. Uh, that was for not. That wasn't just for uh, you know hoots and hollers. It meant something to you, right? And if you have gifts that you can offer. Uh, no question, you got to value them first before anybody else is going to value what you got. Sounds like some reflection maybe would be a good start for people to journal. I always go to journaling yeah. <laughs> for those kind of things to take that time to really ask, answer those questions. Do I believe in my gifts and, and in myself and what I'm doing? That would be a good right. prompt. No question. No question. I love journaling. Uh, I write all the time uh, whenever I feel like I have a block or I'm stuck, I just either I'll, I'll write in a journal, literally write in a journal that I have, or I get on the computer and I'll just start typing and I'll open myself up to receive guidance. And I literally will be ty- typing a conversation between me and my guides. And it really, really clears the way. No question. I think so many people get stuck in their heads. And if you can get that go oh, out, sure. uh, it really opens the doorway to, to receive. Yeah. And I think getting more connections with other people in the holistic community sure. can make a big difference too, as you talk about this topic and, you know, understand how other people have found their way that might be able to give you some inspiration to find your own way as well. No question. And a lot of people I think will just say, well, I just kind of kept doing it. I liked it. It was interesting. So I just kept doing it. And then eventually people, <laughs> people heard, you know, so, and you'll hear that. Which is great. Yeah, because I had a client that wanted to start a, a psychic business and she was really had a lot of those fears, like really deep embedded. And this was somebody from the South, also a Southern yeah. town that was not accepting. Nobody in her family yeah. um, had any of these gifts or understood any holistic strategies. But you know what she did gradually? She started to come out just I hate to say come out of the closet, but, but, it's, <laughs> but it's come out of the holistic the spiritual closet. closet. Yeah. Yeah. So she started to come out just with some friends a little bit at a time. And, and you know, what was interesting is she, she didn't get criticism right. or judgment or, you know, Bible verses. She got acceptance. And then she came out to some cousins that she was really scared of. So that was some of her goals in counseling was to, you know, bring this out more. And the more she did it, they were like, can we have a reading? <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> Right, right. I, I remember in my own yeah. family, um, you know, my, my, I ha, I'm, I'm one of four kids and a baby of four and my immediate older sister, she's gifted. Uh, she hears things. Um, and my, and her wife is very, very gifted too. Uh, but it took me about three years to really get my family to offer me credibility. Like they believed it. Because yeah, I, sure. and I would tell story after story after story of readings about sessions, about past life regressions and what came up. And eventually they're like, ha, ah, wow, what transformation. Amazing. And uh, of course, now they see what I've, what I've done with my business. Uh, so it's pretty legit at this point. Um, but I, wa- I, I, I came from the position of I had a desire to share. I didn't have a desire to convince uh, to share, not convince. <laughs> right. There's a difference between trying too hard True. to push who you are onto somebody versus sharing who you are. And if they if they can appreciate it, great. If they can't, no problem. You have just weeded them out. So be it. Right? Yes. 
Mm-hmm. But I think too, it, like my family, I'm the, sometimes I feel like the black sheep, you know, cause yeah. I'm not only one to into <laughs> yoga so much and meditation and sure. you know, breath work, all that. So I think that's probably how a lot of listeners might feel too. Like nobody in my family does this. I have nobody to talk to. So I think again, going back to that holistic community to talk to other people too, and build those connections and that support. Cause I think you do need support with other people yes. going who also, I'm not gonna say going through it, but experience this yes. to an extent that also promote themselves and have a business with, you know, whatever their holistic strategies are. No question. And I think seeking mentors is great. Uh, when I first started out, uh, really getting to know my gifts, I joined meetup groups for psychic nice. development, tarot card reading, um, channeling, you know, whatever it was, whatever I could read. I have tons of books. Like I devoured uh, learning. And and so there's always a forum to lean into. There's always a class to, to take. There's always somebody on the internet somewhere. This is true. Who, who you could just call and ask a few questions um, or YouTube videos. Like now it's, all you got to do is hop on the computer and you you have the world at your fingertips. And so there's so many people who who are who are for lack of a better term, veteran in this field of uh, spirituality and, and holistic work who, who share their story. Because when you first start out, you are not confident. You're scared. And especially if you're somebody who grew up uh, seeing um, spirits or feeling things or having prophetic dreams prophetic thoughts and, and bad things would happen or you you shared uh, when you were a little uh, boy or girl and you shared uh, s- that you you had seen somebody or knew, knew this and your parent or grandparent or somebody said, don't ever talk about that again. You, you got a lot to overcome. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of, of courage and strength that you got to build within you to to move beyond experiencing that again, because you will. Yes. And I think you're right. Maybe there is some prior stories of being shut down by family or friends. And yeah, I hear it all the time. Yeah. And that, that those experiences when you're three, four, five, they're scary. You don't understand them because they just exist. And the younger that we are, the closer to God, right? So the, the more innocent our soul is, so we, we, we can access our gifts much more easily. We don't even need to actually access them. They just, they're there. Uh, but if you're shut down, if somebody shuts you down, um, it can be an experience to open up again because of the shame or guilt or. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which might lead you to getting your own personal psychotherapy and yeah. It, and of course, sometimes we need coaches too. I think coaches can be another way to help you through. If maybe you do need someone who is like Janice, who <laughs> understands holistic things and yeah. can, and you help a lot of therapists, right? Yes, yes, yes. And I, I work yeah, with therapists, coaches, and counselors and I actually had uh, somebody uh, this morning call me today. She um, She's a leadership coach. She already has a business, like, but she, she practices mindfulness Uh, as well and teaches that and but she has gifts and she wants to know how to step into the confidence of of embracing that and melding the two together and so um very common that i hear um, about uh uh, entrepreneurs in, in that kind of we'll call it predicament yeah it sounds like it very common. So knowing that this is a common thread too, that you're not alone in feeling that initially too. There's no judgment for that. Mm-hmm. I celebrate differences. I think that's one of the joys about life and getting older is that you realize that being different, that is so fantastic. It really is. It's because you get to you get to pave your own way. There's nobody else like you. Exactly. So Janice, is there anything else you wanted to share? today about this topic? I just want people to, uh, whoever's worried about uh, leaning into their their, uh, gifts, developing them, uh, if they feel like they're alone, I just want to assure you, and Chris is assuring you, you're not. um, Build that currency within you. 
practice every day, get testimonials, work with other people, seek uh, counsel and uh, connect with other people that are that are part of your tribe. And I promise you that will help give you uh, the, the, the confidence to start uh, building your brand. Um, and also always, hey, if, if there's a question and you need some help, I'm here, Chris is here. And uh, absolutely, we would both be happy to have a conversation with you to see, to see where you're stuck and how we could possibly help. Excellent. Well, what's the best way for listeners to find you and learn more about you? You can uh, find me at JaniceRCohen.com. That's J-A-N-I-S-R-C-O-H-E-N.com. Um, I have my podcast on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, and it's called The Intuitive Therapist Podcast. And my book is also called The Intuitive Therapist, and it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And it's one of the best books I've read about <laughs> intuition. I will awesome. rave again about your book. Thank you. I'm so glad you read it. Makes oh, me I love feel it. good. I so so appreciate it. And thanks again for coming on for this important topic, Janice. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. Happy to be here, my friend. And thank you to my listeners for tuning in to today's episode. Please help the podcast keep growing by rating and reviewing the show so we can keep giving you these amazing guests and episodes. And once again, this is Chris McDonald sending each one of you much light and love. Till next time, take care. Thanks for listening. The information in this podcast is for general educational purposes only, and it is given with the understanding that neither the host, the publisher, or the guests are giving legal, financial, counseling, or any other kind of professional advice. If you need a professional, please find the right one for you. The Holistic Counseling Podcast is proudly part of the SiteCraft Network.